Hi friends, welcome to Taming Python series. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use conditional statements, nested for loops, and loop dot index zero in DocsDPL automated reports. You can see I already created a blog post on DocsDPL Python library for automating reports in Python. I have also explained many useful and important techniques of how you can automate your Python reports using DocsDPL. So if you don't know how to automate reports using DocsDPL Python library, you can check out my blog post and I will give the link of this blog post in the description of this video. So this blog post is a continuation of that blog post. All right, let us see what we are accomplishing in this video. So I have a list of customers and those customers have different addresses. One customer can have multiple addresses and I have to generate a report for each customer address and show all the addresses in the report but check the customer address which I am using in this report. That means for customer 2 there are two addresses but I am creating the report for the second address so I am creating a check mark for the second address. In another report address 3 would have check mark and address 4 will not have check mark. That means for each customer address I am creating a report. So this is going to be the output of this program which we are going to create now. Actually this problem statement is not mine. I have got this problem statement as a YouTube comment for the previous video which I have made on DocsDPL for automating Python reports. So the viewer asked me if he can generate report for each customer address and show all addresses in the report but tick mark only the address which is being used in the report. So in response to that comment I am making this video and one more reason why I am making this video is we are going to cover conditional statements, nested for loops and loop dot index zero in DocsDPL automated reports in this video which was not covered in the previous video. Although these concepts are easy, it's worth seeing them in action. So let's get started guys. So as a setup to create this Python script, I have already created a script called index.py and in the same folder that has the index.py python file, I have a folder called output and in this output folder, we will generate the reports. So before seeing the template file, let's try to see the code because the code is actually very easy so let's try to break down the code now. First I have did all the imports. DocsTPL is basically the template rendering library. Datetime is for actually the string conversion of the datetime object and docs to pdf is to convert the document file to pdf file and random is to create some random numbers inside the reports. So these are the reasons for importing these libraries. And the next important thing is the customer objects. I am creating reports for two customers and each customer has two addresses. So the data structure I have chosen here is each customer is an object inside this customer objects list. Each customer object has two attributes. One is the customer name and the other is the address list of that customer. So here for example you can see for this first customer object he has a name called customer one name and he has two addresses. This is the first address item and this is the second address item. And these two addresses are assigned to this attribute called address list. And here you can see I have created an array for each address because I want each line to be printed one below the other in the report. So I kept each line as each array item. You can handle this problem in your own way but I have chosen to print each line this way by creating each line as a list item. So that's it. It's very simple. Each customer is actually a python object and each object has a name and an address list and we are going to generate report for each customer for each address and in that report we will show all addresses of the customer and show tick mark for the address which is being used in the report. Let's go to the next thing which is rendering the report. So I have taken a report template called customer template dot docs which is present here in the same folder. I will show this file next. Let's cover the code first. So this is the template file and I have given the template path in this variable. So from here I have started generating the reports. So I am iterating through each customer object. I am getting the customer iterator and the customer object in this for loop. And for each customer, I am also iterating through each address of the address list. So here you can see for each address iterator in the address list. So basically what I am doing is I am getting the address index like first address will have the address iterator of 0, second address will have the address iterator of 1 and so on. So it's standard for loop. And then I am creating the context to be rendered in the word template file. So this is the context. The context is really simple. Today's string is basically the date on which the report is generated. You can keep any date here but in this example to make it simple I am creating the date string of today and this is why I have used the datetime library. I am creating a date month year style string format of today and next is the recipient name. So this attribute is the customer name. So I got the customer object already in the for loop. So I am using the customer name to display in the report context and next is the address list. 
So I'm giving all the addresses of the customer in this address list item of this context. And this will have all the address list items in this address list attribute. So here you can see in the customer object address list item has all the addresses. Since I have the address iterator in this for loop, I am supplying this address iterator to the context because the context should know which for loop iteration it is rendering the report. So I have given the active address index as an address iterator to the context. And the next is score, which is the customer score. In a real world scenario, you may do some database fetching or you might run some statistics and create some data to be populated in the report. But since that is not our objective in this video, I just created a random number as a customer score for each customer and I have set that value as a score attribute in this context object. So now I have created a context object which has all the items necessary to render in the report for each customer address. And the next thing is really simple, create a document object render the context into the document object once the document object is rendered you just have to save the document right so in the results file i have given the path as output slash report underscore zero one and zero is the customer iterator one is the address iterator so for the zeroth customer you will have reports like report underscore zero zero docs report underscore zero one docs and for the second customer you will have report underscore one zero docs report underscore one one docs report underscore one two docs so on so basically i'm just giving this naming convention to dump each report for each customer address that's all you can use any of your naming convention but for this example i've given this simple naming convention of accommodating the customer iterator and address iterator in the report name and then i'm saving the document after deriving the file name of the report output path you can see in the file name of the output path i have mentioned the folder called output and that is the reason why you need to have a folder called output in your index.py folder and in order to convert the document to PDF file, I have just used the docs to PDF library and I am just doing the docs to PDF dot convert word file path to a PDF file path. PDF file path is just derived by replacing the dot docs to dot PDF. So I am basically creating the report dot docs and report dot PDF files. And once you generate the PDF file, you can mail it. How to send file as a mail is covered in my video. I will leave the link of that video in the description. So you can refer that video to grab that function which actually mails a file to a recipient so you can use that code and send this pdf as a mail also if you want but i did not cover in this video because this video is not regarding mail i have already created a video on how to send mail in python you can refer that and that's it so in summary what we are doing is we are creating a context object for each customer address and rendering a document now we have completed the code now let's look at the template which is used to render this data so in my code i have written that the template path is customer template dot docs so this is the document file so let's try to open this now so the template is pretty simple let's try to cover the easy parts first first thing is we are rendering the date string we are rendering the name we are rendering the score here you can see the date string is just today's string inside this double curly braces and the score is variable name called score inside this double curly braces and the recipient name is the recipient name variable inside this double curly braces so this is the easy part and now let's try to see how we can render each address as per our desired output i'll just show you the desired output also side by side so here you can see this is the desired output and we are rendering each address as a table row and we are also showing a checkbox for the active address so here we are doing some conditional logic if the address index is equal to the active index then we have to show check mark otherwise you should not show check check marks so that's why we have used the if condition inside this table. I'm doing loop.index0. What is loop.index0? Loop.index0 gives you the index of the row while it is rendering. So if you are rendering the first row, loop.index0 will be 0. If you are rendering the second row, loop.index0 will be 1. So here, this is the report generated for the second customer's second address. And that's why in the second row, the active index was 1 and the loop.index0 is also 1 that's why this condition became true and we were showing the check mark and in case of the first row the active index was 1 but the row index which is loop.index0 is 0 and since it was not true we did not show the checkbox so this is how we were able to achieve the conditional rendering of check mark in this table rows and here you can see this is also another table column and inside the table column i have created another table for rendering each address line as a table row so what I'm doing is really simple. This is the table and inside the table, the first row is for the for loop and ending the for loop. And here we are just simply rendering the address line. And this top 
for loop is rendering each address inside the address list attribute of the context object. Let's try to create this table again in this template file so that you can understand how I have built this template. So first I'll insert a table. I'm inserting the addresses, right? So I'll just create three rows inside the table and I'll create the for loop start and end here and here I'll insert each address. So for that I have to create the for loop, right? So I'll just write percentage tr for address object in address list. So address list is the context object property which has all the addresses. So that's why I'm using address list here. And this is the item alias which we are going to use inside the for loop. And let me end the for loop here. And here it will be tr and for all right. Now I can render each address in this table middle row. But for each address I have to show two columns, one for the checkbox and one for the address, right? So I'll just split this column into two. So I'll just right click and I'll do split cells. I'll have one row, two columns. Okay, so now I've got two columns. And one is for the checkbox, right? Checkbox required if condition, right? So let's try to write that if condition now. So writing if condition in Jinja2 templating is something like this. You just write percentage if and your condition here. The condition is loop dot index zero equal to active address index active address index is basically set inside the context object so i'm writing active address index here this is the ending of the if condition and then inside the body of the if condition i have to write this image i'll just copy and paste this image and then at the end i'll just close this if condition so if condition you have to close something like this percentage percentage in between you write end if so now i completed my if condition so here in this condition, I'm just comparing loop dot index zero equal to active address index. So if loop dot index zero, that means this row number is equal to active address index, then I will show the tick mark. So now I have set my tick mark condition and next I have to display the address. If you see each address, it's actually list items and you have to render each list item in a new line. So what I'll do is I'll insert another table inside this column because I have to write multiple rows here, right? So to write dynamically rows, you have no other choice than inserting a table. So I'll insert the table again here. I'll just click insert table again three rows. And here in this table, I have to render the address lines. So address lines are basically in this address object itself. So I'll just write a for loop starting here for address line in address object. And then I'll just end this for loop. I'll just copy paste it from here. Just paste the text. All right, I've ended the for loop. And here I have to render each address line. So I'm just rendering each address line by just writing a line here. So a line is the each address line string and just rendering the string. This is the table, but I don't want to show the border between these two cells. So that's really simple. Just select this cell like this and right click table properties. And here go to the borders and shading. You just remove this right border and click OK. OK, you got rid of the right border. And for this table also, you don't want to show this table borders. So I'll just select this table using this plus icon and right click table properties. Once again, go to borders and shading and none. Now I have removed all the borders for this table. So this way I'm able to achieve borders for only each address and I'm removing the border between these two columns. And for each address line also, I just want to show it something like a paragraph. That's why I've removed all the table borders for this address rendering portion. Now you can see how I achieved this rendering using Word document tables. All right, since these two tables are the same, I'll just remove, delete this table and just right click, cut. So I'll remove this table. So this is how you create this template for rendering the nested for loops. You, inside each for loop, you are creating another for loop. That's why I said we are using nested templates. And here we are using the if condition. So that's why we are using Jinja if conditions in our templates. And here we are using loop.index0 to actually find out which row we are rendering. So we have used loop.index0 also in this example. So let me try to save this and close this template file. So all right, our code is set and our template is set. So let's try to run our example. I'll just run this example now. All right, our example has run successfully without any errors. You can see the last line was execution complete and we have seen execution complete without any errors. So our code has been run and inside the output folder, let us see what's present. So for each customer, we had two customers. So we had report underscore one, report underscore zero and each customer had two addresses. That's why report underscore zero, 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 one and then report underscore one, zero, one, one. So let's try to see each PDF how it is rendered. 
I'll just go to the output folder and here let's try to open report 00.pdf the zeroth customer is customer1 so customer1 has been rendered and this is the first address so first address has this tick mark open 01 so this is the zeroth customer which is customer1 we are seeing tick mark for the second address because it is for the address second address right 01 1 means the second address that's why we have got the tick mark for the second address let's try to see the remaining two templates which are rendered for the second customer so if you open report 10 here you can see for customer 2 0 means the first address and i'm opening the report 11 for customer 2 this is the second address you can see the score is same for the second customer in both the reports because we have generated the score at the customer level not the address level you can see in our code the score is generated for each customer not for each address that means the score variable is being used inside this for loop that means one score is being used for all the addresses that's why for these two reports you got the same score since the customer is customer 2 but if you open customer 1 report the score is 40 which is generated for the customer 1 so that's it guys we have successfully rendered each report for each customer address and in this process we got to learn conditional statements in reports loop.index0 for knowing the row number and nested for loops inside the report templates you can see i have created a blog post on this topic I have also given the source code so that you can copy paste and practice it in your own computer. So be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. I also strongly recommend you to refer the previous blog post on docs TPL for generating automated reports because it has all the basics you want to know for this video. I have also given the reference to the official documentation so that you can do further reading. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching.